Listening to airband for me is a key feature in a radio, and the Anytone 578 UB3 Plus has the ability to listen to airband. I live 20 miles away from the Tampa International Airport, so when I choose a radio, the capability of airband is always one of my deciding factors. If all other things are equal with a radio, one has airband, one doesn't, I already know which of those radios I am purchasing. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, and today we're going to talk about the Anytone 578 UV3 Plus that was provided to me by Bridgecom Systems. I'm going to flip this review on its head. I'm going to tell you, would I make this purchase? Is it worth my dollars? And who would I buy it from? Then I'll talk about key features that make this a compelling solution. And then we'll get into some of the more mundane things in a review that typically are on the front end of our amateur radio reviews. Quite frankly, that's how I normally do reviews. But again, just wanted to flip this one on its head. Yes, I would buy it and I'll talk about its compelling features, and I'll talk about who you should purchase it from. I can state emphatically that the Anytone 578 UV3 Plus is absolutely, absolutely the radio I have always wanted in my shack, the mobile UHF VHF DMR radio. This has always been on my wish list. It's always been on my buy list. So I do need to address the elephant in the room. Why have I not purchased it up to this point in time? Secondly, I'll talk about why DMR, and that's a video unto itself, which I will try to squeeze down into just a minute of conversation. And then I'll talk about why Bridgecom Systems. All right, Bob, but why DMR? <laughs> well, that's, that's a video all into itself. Let me try to summarize it. Competition and the ability to get away from a monopoly. You want Fusion, you're going to have the Yesu brand on the radio. You want D-Star, you're going to have the Icom brand on the radio, with the exception of Kenwood also, I believe, is licensed for D-Star. The more competition you have, the more options you have, and the lower you drive the cost. That's why I choose DMR. I imagine, I'm not an expert on this, but I imagine the digital functions are all very similarly capable in how they can communicate globally and can provide the functionality that you're looking for. I do not know that as an expert, that's an assumption I am making. But I choose to use a digital platform that is not a monopoly and more people can enter the market and the cost of entry for you as a user is absolutely lower. What about the complexity of DMR, Bob? Well, I don't overly find DMR that complex. I work in relational databases. I am a high intermediate Excel user. I understand how data from one table is dependent on data from another table. I can do VLOOKUPs and pivot tables all day long. So the concept of having tables that depend on other tables, which is really what a DMR code plug is, is not confusing to me. So. I don't have an issue with the complexity of DMR. I'm not saying, therefore, you shouldn't and can't, and you're inferior if you do because everybody's mind is different. My mind easily wraps around what DMR needs to um, function. So let me tell you what you do if you don't have that natural inclination uh, to understand relational databases. The answer is simple. Connect with someone who has that skill set. For me, that was Bridgecom, and that's why I would recommend you buy from Bridgecom. I don't know anybody in the U.S. market that is more focused on DMR and any tone radios than Bridgecom Systems. You can buy any tone radios from a number of different retailers, but this is Bridgecom's business. They have a whole support base focused on making sure that you are successful in using DMR. And don't forget, this is an analog radio. I'll come back to that in a minute. So here's how I got into DMR. This is my Anytone 878. I purchased it, I don't know, four, five, six years ago. I don't actually recall. And then over here is the first hotspot that's in the corner of my shack. So I purchased that as a kit along with a full 
code plug. I didn't know anything about DMR at that point in time. I made the initial investment with Bridgecom. And once I got that CPS software, I was able to download the code plug from my radio. And all of a sudden I could follow the logic of how you build a code plug. That became my education. And now I can pick up just about any DMR radio, any brand, any CPS and build a code plug. I need to go to code plug school. I mimicked what I learned from my 878 and my hotspot and the code plug that I initially purchased from Bridgecom Systems. So technology costs, having tech support costs. So you do have an initial investment if you want to get into DMR, but all you need to do is to get into it once and then you can teach yourself how to be an expert from that point forward. Of course, if you already understand these things, you're a power user in these types of programs, you don't need to go out and make the investment in someone else's technical work on your behalf. But if you're totally new to this, it doesn't need to be foreign. It doesn't need to be unobtainium. You can do it by investing in someone else who's already put the effort into building something you can learn from. The 578 has a strong ruggedized diecast heat sink body for heat dissipation, as well as strength and durability. And unlike some other branded radios comes with all the necessary hardware to shack mount this or vehicle mount this. This is a digital and analog radio. I made a recommendation to someone recently. They were asking me about DMR and what I thought. I explained to them why DMR was a preferred mode to me, digital, and then they kind of asked additional questions, not sure if they really wanted to get into it. I said, listen, the 578, the 878, these are analog radios as well as digital radios. So if you're uncertain about digital modes, you're not sure if I, you want to get into them in the future, go ahead and purchase some lesser expensive radio with fewer features. That's always an option. But if you think you might get into these modes in the future, why not buy a 578 and 878? They are excellent full featured analog radios. So you can use it just like any other analog radio on the amateur radio frequencies of UHF and VHF. And then if you want that expandability in the future, the digital DMR, you've already made the investment. You already own it. The radio comes with a crisp, clear color screen with sufficient footprint to have both a VFOA and VFOB visible. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It's one of my favorite features. The radio has a clear and loud upwardly facing speaker along with an external speaker jack if you prefer the sound of an external speaker of your choosing. It comes GPS and APRS capable. It has three power levels that I programmed into one single button on the front panel so I can choose between low, medium, and high. For VHF, it's 60 watts, 25 and 10, and UHF, 50, 25 and 10. Again, user selectable using one of the quick keys you can program either on the front panel or onto the handheld mic. The radio has 4,000 memory channels. Think of a memory channel as a, a location and address, a name of your local repeater, and then that frequency for the local repeater and the parameters that that repeater wants to get transmissions back and forth from you. You can add in simplex frequencies and call them, you know, simplex UHF. So these are the names, so to speak, of the channels, the frequencies that you would program in and recall by memory. The radio has 5,000 digital contact capacity. I don't know what the DMR identifications are up to now, but I think it's well, well under 500,000. So we have a very broad scope of opportunity to continue to grow with this particular radio. You're not going to run out of digital contacts very soon. For those of you unfamiliar with DMR, a digital contact is my identifier. It's a number that identifies me as an amateur radio operator. So a digital IT is associated with a person and a call sign. So if you program the radio to do this, when you speak with someone in the digital DMR mode, you will actually see their call sign and some more of their information. Dual receive is a very important feature to me. And here's an example of me listening to both Talk Group 91 worldwide on one VFO while simultaneously listening to the Tampa International Airport Air Band. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Okay, I didn't hear this. this is the zero part of there. Okay, the A2FG70. Okay, Roger, well, awesome. Okay, okay, we're departure ready 2775 out of 1300. And as you want to focus on one transmission over another, you would just adjust the volume on the two VFOs. You can adjust the volume independently on these two VFOs. Why is this important to me? 
Well, hurricane season is coming up here in the Tampa Bay area, and last year it was no picnic. So I will many times be listening to local repeaters, either my NI4CE repeater system or the SARS network, and actually be listening to on the ground reports of weather incidents. One of the great features of DMR is that you can also pick up a talk group which is dedicated to Hurricane Watch. Uh, I don't know what that is called, the Hurricane Watch Net. I'll go ahead and post here on the screen the talk group number and its title. And so I can simultaneously listen to a independent net control operator somewhere removed from the critical danger zone and local actual ground reports of what's happening in my particular area. And I can do that because I have have dual receive. To me, in an MCOM situation, there's nothing more critical than to be able to do this. Of course, I'll have my HF radio keyed up at the same time, listening to the actual Hurricane watch net and one of the two frequencies that they might be transmitting on. What's occurring behind me on the Anytone 578 UV3 Plus is the daily Eagle Net on the NI4CE repeater system. It's a net that's intended to train amateur operators how to relay traffic during an actual emergency situation. It should be no surprise to you based on my comments so far that I really, really, really like this radio and I highly recommend it. I don't often give quite that glowing of a recommendation on a piece of a radio gear, but I do on this one. I'll demonstrate how to change the startup logo from the AnyTone logo to um, any picture you want. For me, it will be my HOA ham logo. And then we'll talk about some other things, maybe like a cross-band repeat. Can I take a humble UV5R analog radio, use the 578 as a cross-band repeat, and get into a DMR conversation? I'll show you how to do that. Is there anything about the 578 that I would recommend to any tone they consider for an improvement? Well, I don't think they're going to be doing this at my request, but I think a larger screen or detachable head would be preferable for a mobile application. Using this in the shack, it's about 30 inches away from my face, and I can see it just fine. I have no problem reading that screen and seeing what channel I'm on, who I'm talking with. If this were in my vehicle, it would be nice to have a detachable head so I could get it oriented differently away from the body and that I could have a larger screen. Of course, we don't want to be monkeyed around with changing frequencies and channels while we're driving. We want to be safe operators, but when I would choose to make a change, it would be nice to have something that's a little bit larger to see in my vehicle. Anytone has offered the BT-01. It is a Bluetooth detachable head that works with the 578 series of radios. And I think that's their answer to the detachable head for mobile use. Of course, you could do this in the shack as well. I don't own one, so I can't demonstrate it, but it definitely has a larger screen and it gives you all the capability to control your radio as though you're touching the front panel of the 578. So I think that would be their answer to detachable head, larger screen. The BT-01. Other than that, I have no complaints, and I am pretty picky. Just ask the people that know me well.